Welcome to the Business and Culture Cast. Today, we're going to Thailand. I'm going to attempt to say the title of today's theme song in my Thai accent. It's called Som Son by the Thai artist Loso. I picked this song because this kind of music is so representative of Thailand. The Thai are very proud of their brand of pop, and you can hear it everywhere from the Bangkok taxis to the student bars of Chiang Mai and all points in between. And I'll link to it from businessandculturecast.com, and while you're checking it out on iTunes, give the show a rating. Today's show is full of actionable information that can be immediately and easily implemented to improve your business relationships, not just in Thailand, but much of the information in today's show is applicable throughout Asia. So if you hear anything that helps you today, give us a five-star review. At this point in time, the show is free. And to keep it free, we have to grow the audience, and it's the ratings and reviews that drive visibility and popularity. It's as simple as that. And, uh, you know, also I'm interested in your story, how the show impacted you. Share your experience with the community by leaving a comment and let everyone learn from you. I am excited about this episode because my guest, Coach Kriyangsak Niratpatanasai, really gets to the central issues that cause so much miscommunication and misunderstanding between business people of the East and West. He starts with concepts and supports each of them with concrete examples to which I can attest are spot on having stepped on these cultural landmines myself many times. Driving the confusion are the differences in the method of demonstrating consideration and respect, which in the Thai culture may seem more important than outcomes. But the coach does not discount the importance of outcomes and gives us useful examples of how to communicate effectively so as to achieve the desired results with our Thai business partners. Specifically, we tackle using Thai values to build productive and strong relationships. The coach goes over email etiquette and demonstrates how Western-style email communication actually can cause a Thai business person to not want to do business with you at all. The mindset behind this is fascinating. We talk about how to interpret reactions, thoughts, and behavior of our Thai counterparts. And this is crucial in Asia when directly saying no is rarely done and communication is much more nuanced to give and to save face. On the flip side of that, we talk about how the Thai interpret our behavior as foreigners. And this is really helpful in building self-awareness and another tool to use to be more effective in Thailand. From there, we do a bit of rapid fire on points of etiquette, including table manners, uh, the issue of who pays versus splitting the bill, and more. Then the coach wraps up our conversation with his one big piece of advice that will unlock the door to productive relationships and smooth over any bumps in the road. I'll give you a hint. It will take a lot of patience. But before we jump into the interview, today's show is brought to you by Libertad Apparel. Full disclosure, this is my company, and I'm building it from scratch. From time to time, I'll mention my entrepreneurial experiences in the interviews in order to offer real-life examples, as well as a way to elicit strategies and tips from the guests that are based on current marketplace realities. So, what is Libertad Apparel? It's clothing for today's global class. We are not stuck in our offices anymore. We are leaving the cubicles and connecting with the world. As such... We need high performance combined with elevated style. It's all natural fiber that keeps you looking dignified and fresh on those long plane rides and in changing climates. So if you don't want to look like you live in a cubicle, but you don't want outdoor gear either, then follow along as I create this company and bring the concept to life. You can get more details at libertadapparel.com. That's L-I-B-E-R-T-A-D-A-P-P-A-R-E-L.com. And if you go there, you can read the story of the roots of the idea, which trace back to a train ride I took in Myanmar or Burma in the summer of 2004. I mentioned the name of today's guest a little earlier, but again, it is Kriyangsak Niratpatanasai, also known as Coach Kriyangsak. 
He is a Thai businessman and founder of The Coach, which can be found at thecoach.in.th. He specializes in one-on-one executive coaching, specifically in the areas of strength coaching, CEO sounding board, CEO successor coaching, and cross-cultural coaching. He has 20 years of experience in marketing, sales, general management, and management consulting with multinational corporations like Citibank, DBS Bank, DHL Worldwide, and Ericsson Communication. For the past 10 years, he has coached senior executives in leading organizations such as Amway, BASF, Big C, Colgate Palmolive, Eli Lilly, Siam Michelin, Sun Microsystems, and Thai Oil. Coach Kriensack is also an author. He wrote the book Bridging the Gap, which tackles the difficult and often confusing aspects of intercultural communication and understanding in the workplace. His writing also appears in a weekly column of the Bangkok Post, which is in print and online. So, without further ado, here is my conversation with Coach Kriengsak. On the phone, I have with me Coach Kriengsak. Coach, thanks for joining me today. Swadee Kap. Thank you for the invitation. Uh, My pleasure. I'm really excited for this interview uh, because, as you know, I live in Thailand, up here in Chiang Mai, and you're down in Bangkok. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, in preparation for this interview, I read your book, Bridging the Gap, uh, about uh, about, uh, foreigners and Thai people working alongside each other here in Thailand. And uh, Mm -hmm. you've also done some articles in the Bangkok Post, and you appear on YouTube uh, covering the same subject. I wanted to find out from you um, why being a culture coach is so important to you. Okay. I think it starts by, by uh, maybe long way back. I'm original. My father came from China, mainland. Okay. So, in fact, I'm foreigner. I'm second generation Chinese in Thailand, as you might be aware that uh, a lot of Chinese in, in, in this country. So Yes. Uh, and then when I was a kid, I lived in Nakhon Suwan, you know, midway between Bangkok and Chiang Mai. Okay. So living there as a Chinese kid, uh, so many times people just just teasing me and and we have a, you know, when we call uh, Caucasian farang, right? And then we yes. have a, a jargon that for Chinese we call Jack. The know. Chinese are called so, Jack? Jack, J, J, A, K, E. I put this way, Jack. Okay. So it's a slang word for, for Chinese. So when I was a kid, I feel a little bit discriminated okay, from, from that sense. And then I remember when I was young, my last name is Lim, L-I-M, Lim. Not this Nirat Patana side, the long one. Okay, so this one I just changed uh, a few years later. Okay, so by born as a Chinese Thai kid, I know that uh, being uh, discriminated is is not fun, you know. And again, when I start working, I saw this trend from the uh, foreigners, uh, mostly the Caucasian, you know, American, French, British come to work with Thais, and then we have this sort of gap, you know, the culture gap. And that probably may be something I'm looking forward to, that if I can be a bridge, you know, to bridging this cultural gap, that would be something that fulfill me in the beginning. Okay, yeah. I see. So when you were young, you learned very quickly to recognize the difference between cultures and what it felt to be on the outside from the Thai culture. Yes, yes. So, so tell me, you know, you've had years of experience uh, being a culture coach now, and you've had this experience when you were young. What can you tell the audience is uh, the value, or really why should a business person visiting Thailand, what is the benefit or value in them putting the effort into understanding Thai culture? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I think Thailand is unique in the sense that... Uh, if you are a tourist before come to working with Thais, uh, a lot of people have that sort of experience before come to working in Thailand. You know, 
they came to Thailand before as a tourist once uh, a few years back. So that sort of uh, what I try to say is that being a tourist and being a working professional in Thailand is totally different. Okay. You will feel warm. Uh, you will feel you know enjoy with the Thai cultures when you are tourists because people treat you quite nice. Okay. And, but when you come to work in the office, people still have that sort of nice relationship. Yeah. But the way Thai works is quite totally different from the, uh, let's put this this way, the West way. Okay. The Thai way and the West way is uh, a bit uh, opposite okay. because uh, some Thai values in terms of, you know, uh, relationship, in terms of uh, respect, in terms of uh, how we care a lot about the face and the uh, relationship, yeah. So if you don't really understand that, a lot of foreigners who come to work in Thailand will feel uh, strange, and sometimes they just uh, uh, misunderstanding. I see. Use their own values to measure the Thai behaviors. That create a lot of, you know, cross cultural incidents. Yeah. Well, let's. That's a, a good point. That that. So let's just jump right in, it, it, right there, with, with talking about the Thai values, uh, with the the Thai uh, mindset and perspective, and maybe some of the outward characteristics that the Thai use to display those values. Uh, mm-hmm. What What does a Westerner need to need to know so that uh, they can identify the behavior and the beliefs so they can sort of, uh, as the phrase you use in your book, spot the gap and recognize when these differences are having an effect in their interactions? I think if foreigners understand these three core values, Thai values, uh, and if they really try to understand this, I think it will help them a lot in the workplace. Okay, uh, What I... We we'll say three things is that Kreng Chai, Mai Pen Rai, and Hai Kiet. Okay. So maybe I can go one by one. Yeah? Okay, great. Okay. So first one, Kreng Chai, is a Thai word. The close translation is considerate. Okay. Uh, care about the other people feeling. To give you an example of this one, let's say... You asked me that, uh, Coach, can we have this telephone interview at 10 o'clock in the mornings? Mm-hmm. And if, if I has other appointment at that time, instead of say, oh, no, I cannot do that. I have other appointment. I would say that, oh, clients, 10 o'clock in the morning, you know, could you have other options? Okay. And you see that instead of say, no, I cannot have that appointment with you because I engage in other meetings. The way I beat around the bush in foreigners' perception. <laughs> you see, you see? Yes. it might take another, you know, 30 minutes conversation until you say that, hey, coach, why don't you just tell me directly? And I will say, oh, Kai, it's difficult for me. I cringe at you. you know, so this is how, how it's happened in the workplace. You know, this idea of beating around the bush is something that in mm-hmm. foreigner conversations with each other we talk a lot about. Uh, mm-hmm. It's something that we don't often recognize when it's happening, and we can get a little bit frustrated because we we think that the Thai person is kind of just brushing us off or saying no when really they're trying to be polite. They're Correct. in a polite yeah. way asking for another option. Correct. Ah, yes. okay, yes. you, you've got it. Okay. Instead of looking at, wow, this guy is trying to polite to, to, you know, accommodate you, but he could not. Instead of saying, no, I cannot, he is just trying to find the word. And in addition to that, the English language is difficult for us, right? So, so that even makes it worse for uh, some guys who, you know, so, you, so instead of. Back and forth. Right. Yeah. So instead of offering an option himself, there might be a language barrier that he is not able to offer the option. Uh, Correct. Yeah. Ah, okay. So he's really w- asking you to to make this work in a different way. He's willing. He's not saying no, but but uh, because of language and your own uh, schedule and parameters you have to meet, he's asking you <laughs> to 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 offer another suggestion. 
correct, correct. Ah, correct. So this this the first one is Kriang Chai is the one that most foreigners, particular the Western Westerners, we have difficult to accept because for for you or for them they will feel why don't you just say no and say uh, I cannot do that. Uh, could we schedule other times? This simple for you but difficult for us. It's, it's really hard to to express that. Yeah. That brings up a, a, another question, you know. So, if the Thai person uh, seems to us to be beating around the bush, um, mm-hmm. when that's really just asking for another option, how do we know when the Thai person is actually saying no? Okay. So, I think let's say the first time we had this incident, right? And if you if if you're patient. So I, as a Thai, I know that I beat around the bush, uh, and but I see that hey, you're patient. So my thinking is that hey, I care for this man, and this man is care for me. So next time, the way I beat around the bush may be shorter, you know, because I know that you have some sort of uh, caring aspect to me as as a friend, as a person. Okay. I see. So so. And again, you you will learn more if you're patient and observe. You will see that ah okay. And second time you patient, the third time you might say, hey, Kun Kengsak, maybe you can tell me directly what what is what on your mind. And I will say ah, oh. and then I will more direct to you in a Thai way. Okay. I see. Okay. This is the, the evolution. Okay. But again, if you come with all this knowledge, first reaction. Uh, when I say that, oh, I try to explain some or have some other excuse. And then you will say, oh, Kun Keng I don't have time for it. Why don't you say to me, what do you want? If I perceive that the first time, I will judge you that, ah, this man is not care for me, he's care for his time. So next time when you ask for anything, instead of beat around the bush, I might just, uh, okay, I... I will do that, or maybe just uh, not my head, or send the signal that okay, I will comply with you. Okay. And then you call me at ten, and I was not at the telephone. So next day you call me and and angry at me, and now I just okay, okay, I'm sorry, and, and I did not want to explain anything to you because I don't trust you anymore. Ah, I you see. You see, yes. it's getting worse, getting worse. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I've I've experienced that, unfortunately, as, as I think <laughs> as I think most foreigners living and working here have. Um, mm. So that's Krang Jai. What was the next one? The next one is my pen Rai. My pen Rai. Correct. Yeah, my pen Rai. The the close translation is that. Uh, it's okay, it doesn't matter. Basically, let go. Okay, whatever happened, just let go. Uh, don't try to make it serious. Okay, let me give you an example of my pen drive. Okay. Yeah. Uh, last month, I went to have a dinner with a friend's friend. Okay, he's living in Thailand for many years, so he's no Thai a lot. Okay, and he's good at it. So he's made cook. Uh, I think uh, bake some bread and it's too, how do you say, too dark, uh, you know. Okay. It's, it's overcooked, basically. Okay. Oh, too and done. Instead, yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. The bread, you know, you put the bread in, in the oven and it came out, it's too dark. Okay. So instead of complaining with the maid, he said, oh, my belay, my belay, we can eat that. Okay. And the maid quietly leave because she did not intend to uh, make mistake, but it happened, right? And the boss said, okay, my pen lie. And the maid, uh, okay, guilty, and she tried to make correction for the next round. Okay, this is a good way of use my pen lie. On the other hand, if you are new to Thailand, you saw this mistake, and you said to the maid, even uh, politely, that, oh, this is mistake, you have to do it again. Uh, and mostly foreigner is not patient like that, right? But mm-hmm. uh, if if you say, "Oh, this is wrong," why don't why why didn't you do it right? 
โอเคดูอีกเกณฑ์ now this made me feel oh, I'm was terrible I'm was bad I know already I guilty already but what the boss say is made me nervous more so the next round the tendency to do more mistake will be a lot because she will nervous and you know scary ah okay so, so this is my pen dry and and the way how to use it properly yeah so so let me see if I have this right if if a mistake is done by a business partner um and it needs to be corrected, and you want the you want the business partner to correct it. You can maybe with a smile, because I know smiling is very important in Thailand, as it is yes. everywhere. Uh, mm-hmm. But you can politely say "my pen rai" or "it's okay, no problem." Um, yes. But in saying that, you subtly communicate that there it's not correct, but you will move on anyway, and then you will leave mm-hmm. it up to the other person to. Correct the mistake. Is is that right? Correct. Okay. This 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 is the proper way to use it. Okay. okay. But the, but the, also yep. Uh, no, ahead. I was just gonna. You mentioned then the abrupt, often the the very abrupt tendency of people in the West, and I have this myself, where we say, you know what, this isn't right. You need to do it again. Where we expect that kind of uh, discussion in the West, and we don't consider that rude. Here, it can be really devastating. Correct. Yeah, yeah. It is. It will impact our face. You know, right. we want to protect our face, saving our face. That that quite critical one. Yeah. And I think it's at the end of your example. I think this is really critical. You actually, when you are abrupt like that, um, uh, it's not motivational. You actually, in in Thailand, you increase the likelihood of future mistakes when you do that. Correct. Yeah, no, no ways, scary or even you know some sort of yeah, uh, yeah, depression. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So so okay. far, patience and and politeness are are you know really weaving their way through these values. Correct. Correct. Now I want to emphasize more on the negative of my pen drive. Okay. A lot of a lot of Thai use is uh, not proper. For example. Let's say tomorrow my boss said that things a we have appointment at nine o'clock in the morning. Please be sharp, okay. And then tomorrow come and I arrive the office nine fifteen, nine thirty. I said to my boss, "Oh, my pen light traffic is bad," and the boss will get angry because this is the wrong way to use my pen light. And sometimes use this as a take take advantage, you know. Oh, it might be like to be late. It might be like to slow. It might be like blah blah blah. Right. This is this is not the correct way, and people use it uh, take advantage of it. And foreigners, most foreigners, will feel no. This is been right for me. You know, this is serious for me. Right. Right. And, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And this is. This, yeah. So we have Krang Jai. We have Mai Pen Rai. Mm-hmm. And then, yes. what is the third core value? The third one is high gear. Okay, high gear or respect. This is uh, you can see a lot is impact on a few aspect. Uh, respect for seniority is uh, saving face. Okay, respect for uh, rankings. Uh, re- respect for orders. You know, this sort of high gear thing is some sort of sensitivity. Is To a lot of ties. Okay. 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 Uh, to give you some example, and let's say I'm I'm 53 years old, and if you're a young man, uh, 20 years old, just graduate and work in the office, even we are in the same level. In the meeting, if I say something wrong, and then you try to correct me, I will say that, oh, man, you are not respect me. You are junior. I'm senior. You know, even we are in the same rank, same level, but you have to show me respect. So this is some sort of high gear and respect. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this is actually something that's really interesting because uh, you, uh, in your Bangkok Post article, talked about some things that that uh, you're suggesting might need to change in Thailand, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. in the case where a senior person. 
might actually say something that is incorrect and a younger person offers an answer, right now it's perceived as disrespect and, and perhaps might be ignored. But how might, um, it seemed like your article is suggesting to find some polite and constructive ways for a younger person in the workplace to correct a more senior person. Do I have that right? Yes, yes. You need to do it more diplomacy way. For example, if, if in the meeting you saw that uh, other senior guys you know, make some mistakes, uh, the way to articulate is you need to be more polite. You say you might say that, oh, hey, P. Kriang Sak, P is, is brother, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, P. Kriang Sak, okay. Uh, there might be some some something you uh, want to emphasize more on that, okay. Basically, not tell it straight away. You need to find some sort of, and usually people are not able to do that. What people do is make it after the meeting, okay? Privately. So after the meeting, yeah, privately. Uh, let's say the the meeting finished, I might go to that uh, P and say, "Hey, P King Sak, uh, I might be wrong, but I saw that figure. Could you recheck it a bit? Now I will know that oh, I made some mistake. Okay, this guy tried to help me." So that, that's enough. I see. Yeah. Okay, so the, the three core Thai values are Kreng Jai, or being considerate of another person's feelings. Uh, yes. Um, and then there is Mai Pen Rai, which is mm-hmm. no problem for, or forget about it. And then mm-hmm. we have uh, Hai Kiet, which is showing respect to your seniors or people that outrank you in some way. Correct, yeah. So, you know, so we have that. Those are good principles to really operate from. Um, This might be a good place to really talk about uh, building relationship in Thailand, Uh, you you know, especially using these core values. You know, relationship is in business and, of course, in our personal lives is important all around the world. but, But how to do it effectively in Thailand, I think, is worth discussion. Um, mm-hmm. So let me put the question to you this way. Uh, you know, in a lot of books out there, including yours, uh, some of the, there are really great examples of, you know, a foreigner moving to another country, getting a job, and working on a more long term basis in a foreign country. And so they have the advantage of time to slowly build relationship. However, a lot of business people come to Thailand for a much shorter period, maybe a few days, a week at best, and they need to really build trust and build a bond with, let's say, a factory that might be manufacturing their goods or something else. Can you offer any suggestions for you know, a foreigner that may have been, you know, to a certain point, dealing with their Thai counterparts over phone and email, but now they're making their first trip to Bangkok, and they're going to meet face to face for the first time. They have three days or a week. That is all. What are some suggestions and ways for for them to to build this relationship and maybe use these Thai core values to do it? Okay, uh, I think you have to do a lot of homework before come to Thailand. Okay. Okay. And and uh, emails. Okay. First, I think. Uh, Email would be the first step, you know, introduce yourselves and then uh, elaborate more on, on, on yourselves and then try to make other parties see the values, okay, what in it for, for them in the beginning. But don't try to, you know, uh, and this, I got a lot of bad example, you know, a lot of uh, business partner from overseas want to come to Thailand and to discuss business opportunity with me. But the way they wrote email to me is too short, too direct. Basically, I don't have time to write about this. I will come here for three days. So could you meet us and discuss about business opportunity? So for me, I said, it's your problem. It's not my problem. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Because, because okay. you're interpreting this, you're, if you don't have the time to invest in an email, then you don't mm-hmm. care. And I Correct. only want to Correct. do business with people that care. Correct. And apart from that, now it's come back to the, the face value. If I'm uh, well established 
entrepreneur in Thailand. So it means that uh, I, I, I'm, I'm quite big shot around here, right? So I assume that the foreigner who come to Thailand, if you're a big shot, we already have discussed already, you know, the big name, uh, big firms that want to have agent in Thailand, they already made discussion with local partner already. So I assume that the newcomers who I don't know any background before and you don't come from the big corporate names. So basically my assumption is that I'm big local, you're small international. So now it's come back to the the, the you know, respect. Mm -hmm. So if you show me the respect that, hey, I have something to offer to you, I care about you, I want to show blah, blah, blah. It's, it's a bit... Uh, uh, elaboration more and tell tell me more about yourself, your benefit, your things. And don't try to get okay, first email and get appointment. I think that's the first mistake. To try to try okay. to get the appointment from the first email is a mistake. Correct, correct. Yeah. Because because I think it's too rush. Okay. Come back to the, the relationship. We need to build relationship first, then talk business. So if you uh, draft some email and we correspond in about two, three times, perhaps I will suggest, hey, maybe we have a phone conversation before you come to Thailand. Okay. And then we have a, a phone conversation. Now you apply those uh, uh, core Thai values. You know, be patient, try to understand me, uh, and the timing. Overseas uh, telephone conversation, because the time different, right? So I want to talk 10 o'clock in the morning and you say, oh no, 10 o'clock, this is my sleeping time. Uh, again, I said, I don't care uh, because we have not had any business relationship before. Mm. So if you really care for me, maybe we can say that uh, uh, 10 o'clock is not fine for you, but what would your suggestion? Okay. But not say, oh, 10 no o'clock, this is my sleeping time, this is your working hours. Because the relationship you start from that, hey, this guy is, uh, maybe he's trying to ask too much. Yeah. I see. So, yeah. Well, I was just going to say, you know, I'm listening to you, and it, it makes complete sense to me, but it is, it is, from the Thai perspective, it is really opposite of what we are actually trained to do in a place like the United States, where... You have to justify immediately why you're talking to somebody, you know, either face to face or on the phone or via email. Um, I actually used to work for a sales trainer uh, that would tell on everybody, and at least in our culture, he was absolutely correct. He's like, you have eight seconds to grab the attention of an executive. So mm -hmm. you have to have the most powerful uh, eight seconds that you can figure out. And none of that includes getting to know the other person. None of that includes mm. your name. Uh, n no sort of introduction. It is, here's why you should talk to me. Here's my value. And you justify yourself. So, mm -hmm. I, you know, I slip into that sometimes as I'm doing business. Uh, you know, right now I'm dealing with people primarily in China. And um, they're so kind and patient with me. But I, <laughs> I catch myself all the time. The phone rings, they pick up, I say, hello, hello, and then I jump right into business. And then we talk for maybe an hour, and at the end, they want to slow everything down and get to know me. And it's then that I realized, oh, my gosh, I've gone way too fast, and I've, mm -hmm. I've risked the relationship by being too impolite. But fortunately, they've been forgiving so far, but it, this really is a difficult thing because... We're talking about changing the entire way that you communicate. Correct. Essentially. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so you say elaborate. You, you write, can you give us an idea of what this first email might sound like? You know, because this really is different. You know, normally our first email is here is why we need to talk. But you say okay. elaborate and introduce. What, what would it sound like? Uh, okay, before you email to me... Uh, I assume that you have done some homework, right? Study me more. Uh, so you, you, okay, for example, now we are talking about you come for, let's say, from US. You have some good products you want to distribute in Thailand. Okay. So 
so you looking for business partner who quite well established in Thailand. Okay, not 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 the you know a small partner. So you want someone quite strong in the local market. So if that's the case, then you you have done some homework. You know that how oh, this company is uh, well established in Thailand because of. So you need to elaborate that you know me a bit uh, as, a, as a kind of respect, as a kind of you know. Uh, yeah, show that you you care me, you study me before, okay. Okay. And then uh, at at that part, right, your intro, introduction part, that who are you, and you know me, and uh, you want to discuss about visit opportunities, okay. Uh, and this is the first email. I I want to introduce myself. If you think uh, we have some sort of uh, similar uh, core values, we can make progress by. Maybe second emails, and then after that we can have a telephone conversation, and we can end up with a face-to-face meeting in next couple months. Okay. This this is uh, uh, I love this. This is fascinating to me because I'm thinking about all the emails I've written, and including the email a couple of weeks to you to introduce myself. I think was still quite short. Um, so you're telling me that if a Thai person, a Thai business person, opens a really long email that demonstrates how uh, the writer is familiar with their work and their business, and then even furthermore, a couple of paragraphs of introduction to them. A Thai person doesn't look at a long email as a bad thing, saying, I don't have the time, but you're saying that's what they actually want. Okay. So this is, if you contact the right person, this is, I think that person will say that, ah, you have made an effort to try to know me, try to contact me. Okay, it's worthwhile to have this kind of uh, relationship. On the other hand, you have some BC local businessmen who may see this, oh, it's too long, I don't read it. You will not get uh, the feedback. Okay, if that's the case, there are options too. Okay. 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 If that's the case, if you try to write some email and no feedback at all, maybe you need someone to introduce you to that person. Okay. In, in this case, again, if you don't have time to come to Thailand for the first time, uh, in, introduction by someone that have some connection to that person is, is make it easier. Okay. You, you have to find someone to introduce you to connect to that person. And it will end up like this, that you you know that, hey, this person is the member of American Chamber of Commerce, and you know some guy in MCHAM. So, and that guy know this person, so you wrote email, you write email to the contact person that you know in MCHAM. So that person might say, hey, Kling Sak, I know clients, uh, we have good relationship, he's a good guy, maybe you can connect with him and uh, how, how what is best uh, a suitable way to communicate with you? I might say that oh, why don't you ask try to call my secretary and make uh, appointment for a telephone uh, conference? So that's that's you know use someone to refer to. Okay, great suggestion. Thank you. So. Here we're talking about sending a couple introductory emails, then maybe having a phone call, and then at some point in the future, a face-to-face visit, perhaps. Assuming that all of this do- is done, and you know, at varying degrees of effectiveness, what might be a sign uh, to the Western business person that they're actually building a good, solid relationship with their Thai counterpart? How how might we be able to know how things are going? Okay, so let's say uh, we have initial contact on the phone. Okay, I I once on the phone at least we 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 know that he this person on the phone house he treat you. Okay, and if he the the conversation is uh, if less than three minutes, I would say that probably maybe. The chance to meet that guy is quite short, you know. Uh, but if the conversation three or four minutes discuss more on detail, and he said, hmm, there are a lot of things I think we need to meet face to face, then I think that's opportunity. Yeah. Okay. 
So, so generally speaking, the longer they communicate with you and, and the more that time they, they invest in you is a, is a positive mm -hmm. sign. Correct. Yes. Okay. Well, let's, um, you know, we've talked about, uh, some interactions in the workplace over email and that kind of thing. And now we come to the face-to-face -face visit in Thailand. It's quite possible that a business person would get an invitation of some sort from their Thai host, maybe even mm -hmm. for a weekend outing. Um, yes. You know, in your book, I actually thought that the examples that you gave really illustrate uh, the Thai thinking and the Western thinking and how different they are. I thought this, this particular example was fantastic. Can you talk about... Uh, well, first of all, actually, before I ask the question, you know, getting an invitation in the West, oftentimes it's not that sincere. It's a display of politeness, but they expect you to turn them down, you know. Mm -hmm. um, it, you know, it's, it's quite common to get an invitation somewhere, and they, they're really expecting you to decline. And, and so, the per, so the person extending the invitation is able to be polite, uh, without being inconvenienced, but in Thailand, if they if they extend an invitation to you to say come to the this weekend outing, they really mean it. They're sincere about mm. it. Is that correct? Yes, yes. But well, usually it will start like this. Let's say uh, you come to Thailand and we have appointment. We meet right, and after the meeting, I say that clients, okay. Maybe we should we should get to get her for lunch or dinner if you if you have time this trip, and you say oh lunch and dinner is fine right. So once we have lunch and the next day, and then I will say client what what do you plan for this weekend and you said nothing, oh maybe we sh we should go for golf together, and again if you pick off, uh, you're supposed to say yes because. Your relationship is get stronger, but if if I say, "Oh, you have come for lunch tomorrow," you said yes, and then after lunch, I say that mm, maybe I should not uh, ask him for this weekend. He might be say, "I will consider it. I will grant you." Okay, I will not say that. But during conversation, you say that, "Oh, I'm love golf. I." really want to pay off in Thailand, but I don't have any uh, clubs now. I'm, I'm so sorry about that, blah, blah, blah. And I said, Klein, why don't we play this weekend together? I have extra set. Okay, come, come, come. And here I think is by natural progress, you will say, wow, this is good. Yeah. But if you say that, oh, I don't pay off, usually during the weekend I, I have to you know, do a lot of emails, uh, follow up, blah, blah, blah. I said, wow, this guy is so busy. I should not interrupt him during this weekend. So it's evolved based on the observation from both parties. Yeah. I see. And you know, you know, you mentioned, you know, that if the if the if the Western person says I need to catch up on emails or continue to work over the weekend, a Thai person mm -hmm. might, you know, in, in this case say, Wow, he's really a hard worker and dedicated, but in the book it points out that uh a, a other Thai people could interpret that as you trying to show off. Correct. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you have to be careful. You have, it, I guess, is the message. And really, like you said, krang jai. It's you know honor the other person's feelings, but also really understand their point of view also, and 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 how they might interpret uh, uh, you declining their invitation. Yes. In in the Chinese way, you say that it's humble. I think similar to to us. Okay. We want to see that if you are good, you have to be humble. Right. If you are great, you are even more humble. But if you try to brag about your success, this guy has some sort of problem. He is trying to show off. Right. You see. Yeah. Well, Coach, as we start to get close to the end of the interview now, I wondered if we could just go over uh, some quick tips on etiquette. Um, mm -hmm. coming out of the book, Bridging the Gap, I'll mention again for anyone that wants to read it. Um, I'm just going to throw a couple things out there. Maybe you can comment on it. Okay. At a Thai business dinner or lunch, you recommend in the book, don't split the bill. Let the Thai person pay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why is that? 
I think it's show a courtesy of the host. It, in this case, if the Thai asks you, say, clients, let's have lunch together after this meeting. So by inviting you to lunch is imply that I will pay for it. Okay. But if you say that, Kun Keng Sak, do you have any plan for this lunch? I said, no. And you said, Kun Keng Sak, why don't we join? Now I assume that you want to pay. Oh, I see. You see? Okay. okay it depends on who, who initiate the invitation. Yeah. I see. But if if I in, invite you and then you try to pay, I will say, no, 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 cry. You don't need to do that. I will take care of it. But if you insist or if you want to split the bill, I will say that, well, this guy is serious. You know, uh, this is a small thing for for our business transaction. Yeah. I see. So really, in Thailand, uh, the bill should not be split. Whoever initiated the invitation should be the one to pay. Correct. Correct. Okay. Now, why don't we continue with some table manners? I, I thought it was an interesting distinction in Thailand versus China, for example, was noise while you eat. In China, it can mm. be interpreted as a compliment to uh, the person that cooked the meal because the noise mm-hmm. indicates enjoyment. Uh, but in Thailand, in the book, you mentioned that really eating eating quietly is more appropriate. Correct. It's more polite manners. It's, it's more civilized in, in our perception. Yeah. I see. Okay. Um, let's see also here. Oh, th- something I really loved was you know following a meal... And I've had this happen to me before. The my Thai counterparts will say, "Let's go for a quick drink," and um, this actually happens in all levels of Thai society, as, as I've experienced. Let's go for a quick drink can actually mean let's spend the next four or five hours together. It's not quick at yeah. all. <laughs> yes, I, I think you have to be careful when when Thai say, "Oh, let's go have a quick drink," <laughs> and 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 you might say, "Ah, uh, if." If you have some other commitment, you just want to spend one or two hours, you might say that, oh, I need to have uh, to do something after two hours. Uh, would that possible we can finish with, uh, with within two hours? I would say, oh, okay. Then uh, I try to stick with two hours instead of quick ding because a quick ding is just maybe some sort of a gimmick that we say is might be the whole night quick thing. <laughs> you know, I will say though that from a Western perspective, this is one of the reasons why we uh, why foreigners love Thailand and Thai people so much, is because mm-hmm. when that quick drink turns into four and five hours, you might be tired <laughs> at the end of four or five hours, but you really, really appreciate your new friends or business partners for spending so much time with you because in the countries where we come from, our family members don't even spend that much time with us. And to have these mm-hmm. enthusiastic uh, new Thai friends spend so much time with us and during that four or five hours really want us to enjoy ourselves, that's a kind of respect and consideration that most of us don't experience at all. Yes, but this thing in Thailand uh, changed quite a bit uh, there are a lot of people don't don't drink as much as it used to be in the past. You know, right. particular business people they 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 don't over drink, right? Right, the uh, mm-hmm. workers. Uh, so people just maybe sometimes a quick drink of them maybe one or two glass of wine, and that's it. You know, dinner and one or two glass of wine. I think that quite uh, more and more. You know, uh, less drinking compared to the past. Right. Okay, good to know. And now the last thing, um, and this is actually something that uh, is really important to me in my day-to-day life in Chiang Mai. Uh, can you talk about what a why is compared to a handshake and may, included in that maybe also discuss Thai smiling and eye contact? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, for us, why is like check hand or greeting. So we... Uh, but we don't expect foreigners to why Thai, you know. When when they show why to you, you might bow your head a bit. Uh, so just just acknowledge. Okay. But if you why, we we will know that you try very hard. We don't try to catch you know, what's wrong with with your manners. You know, the, you you have to do it the right way. No, I think we we have that sort of my pen right attitude. Okay, this my pen right. Mm-hmm. Uh, you show some sort of uh, why signal to us, 
is great. But even then, uh, again, it's no big deal for us. Maybe you just uh, yeah, bow your head a bit like Japanese or Chinese. I know? see. And I think, we need to maybe, I think we need to maybe mention for the listener that a Y is placing two hands together in front of your chest below your chin and often a, a slight bow or nod of the head toward it as a mm. greeting. Okay, yeah, that's and right. Just that's so right. they can visualize what that is. And, you know, uh, along with that, I've noticed in Thailand, and this really has, has, you know, is something we don't experience much in the West, and that is the Thai hold eye contact will, you know, a lot longer, and during that time, they will really give you a very heartfelt smile. At least that's the way it, it, it appears. And to a, to a visiting uh, Western business person, this is difficult. This is difficult to hold the gaze for so long. No, oh, you mean Thai internal eye contact? Yes, okay. yes. Could you say it again? Yeah. Yeah. Long or short? Correct. So, it, 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 let me ask you: How general, does it? Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Please go ahead. Okay. In general, the Thai eye contact is not good compared to the West. Okay. For for example, if 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 you and me meet face to face, I will not stare at you. Uh, eye contact is feel for me is impolite to do that. Okay, I, I can accept if you try to, you know, look at me, stare at me, but again, I feel a bit uncomfortable also. I see. So, so Thai are not quite enjoy to have, you know, uh, eye contact, eye to eyes. It's, it's a bit aggressive for us. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But, uh, but a lot of smiling, you would recommend that? Yes, yes. Smiling <laughs> and, yeah. <laughs> This is another reason why, by the way, that if the Thai people ever get sick of so many foreigners being in their country, just quit smiling so much because this is why we come back. The Thai people, yeah. we get everywhere you go, Thai people look at you and smile at you, and uh, that's what makes us want to sell our homes in the West and move to Thailand and live the rest of our lives here. Just it creates a, a really warm and welcome environment. Mm-hmm. So you never have to kick us out of your country by by passing a law. All you guys have to do is stop smiling, and you solve all your problems. <laughs> no, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why we call it a land of smile. That's right. Thailand, That's right. the land of smile. Yeah. So, Coach, I've really enjoyed our conversation today. Uh, as we wrap up, is there anything that you would like to add? Uh, I guess in in short, uh, tips for foreigner to come to. Work in Thailand is that patient, okay, mm-hmm. patient, and patient. I think that's the key word. Patience, 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 patience. Correct. And then once you have this patient mindset, you observe and try to understand Thai. Uh, I think you will get a lot of rewarding relationship because if you start by patient, for us, we see that you care. And once we have a care, it's good relationship. The business uh, still we have a deal to talk on the rational side but it would be a lot easier if we start with good relationship foundation and patient 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 yeah. thank you very much i think that's terrific advice uh you know tell us before you before we end here how uh, how can we get in touch with you? First of all is is your book available like on amazon.com can they buy it in the west Yes, they have in the Amazon, they have in Asia books for both e-version you know, okay. and the, the hard copy version. So Asia books, uh, maybe Amazon, the title is yes. Bridging the Gap by, Correct. by Coach Kriang Sak. And I will put your, your, your full name on, the, on our website and link to your book, actually, to make it easy for listeners. And, and my website also, yeah. Yes, what is your website? Uh the course.in.th coach. Dot, I'm sorry say, please the course the course oh the coach the, yeah the course yeah okay dot .in.th dot yeah. okay and I'll be sure to include that on on our webpage as well so they can link right to you Mm-hmm. So, Coach, I think this was a really productive interview. I, you know, I've been in Thailand for years, and I know that uh, I've learned something. And certainly, when I read your book in preparation for the interview, I, I, uh, I found myself kind of chuckling and re- because I was realizing many of my mistakes even after years of being here. 
But uh, fortunately, the Thai people are forgiving. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, we can say my pen rai. Yeah. My pen rai, my pen rai. Thank yep. you so yep. much for your time today, and uh, I will be in touch in the future. Thank you. Okay. I have a great day. That's it, gang. How did it go? If you got anything out of the program today, give us a five-star review on iTunes. To find it quickly and easily, you can click on the iTunes icon from businessandculturecast.com. Many thanks to Coach Kriangsak. I read his book, Bridging the Gap, in preparation for this interview, and there is so much great information that we didn't have a chance to get to. So get the rest of it by searching for it on Amazon or asiabooks.com. Also, if you go to my page, you'll find the coaches offered restaurant recommendations and cultural activities for your next visit to Thailand. So use it as a reference and treat yourself when you get there. If you liked what you heard today and you want to be notified when we publish our next episode, subscribe via the method of your choice or while you're getting your restaurant recommendations, sign up for the mailing list and we'll deliver it right to your inbox. Thanks for listening and safe travels.